Paris former chemin de verre de petite quenture small er belt railway, also colloquially known as La Petite Quenture, was a circular railway built as a means to supply the city's fortification walls, and as a connection between Paris railway termini. Built as two distinct Quenture Syndicate Freight and Paris Orte passenger lines from 1851 that together formed an arc that surrounded the northern two thirds of Paris, it would become a full circle of rail around the capital when its third Quenture Rive Gauche section was built in 1867. Serving first as a freight only line, then developing into a passenger service, the Chemin de Verre de Quenture became Paris' first metro like urban transport. Much frequented until its 1900 Universal Exposition peak, the Metro appearing that year would mark the onset of the Petite Quenture Line's decline. Mostly abandoned since its last year of passenger service in 1934, but still largely intact, its future is still the source of much debate as of 2017. Many would like to preserve the remaining stations as part of France's national heritage, while others would like to see its former path transformed into parks and communal gardens and yet others would like to see, in some form, the track and stations remaining become a functioning line once again. <laughs> Origins France's first steam locomotive-driven passenger rail service was its 1837 Paris Saint-Germain railway that ran to an embarcadier ancestor of today's Gare Saint-Lazare. In the years following, new railways appeared in many regions across the country, but in all, its early 19th-century rail technology expansion was far behind that of its Western European rivals. The Louis-Philippe government monarchy planned to close this gap with their 1842 Le Grand Star, a map of pre-programmed railway concessions that made Paris the centre of a spiderweb network of lines reaching to all regions and borders of France. By the end of the decade, France's rail was ruled by five distinct railway companies, each with their own exclusive monopoly over their respective regions of France. Topic. Paris before the Petite Quenture Paris was only half its present size in the years of the Quenture's creation, its limits then were the city's 1784 Fermiers Genero tax wall that followed almost exactly today's Metro Line 6 and 2. From 1841, Paris dotted itself with a ring of defences a few kilometres outside these. Completed in 1845, the Thiers wall fortifications enclosed land that was mostly countryside, save for a few forborgs extending for a distance along the roadways from its city gates. In that year, Paris had five major rail stations, all located just inside the city tax walls, each run by separate companies, Paris Rouen later west, near today's Gare Saint-Lazare, Nord at today's Gare du Nord, Paris Strasbourg later est, at today's Gare de Lay, Paris Lyon at today's Gare de Lyon and Paris Orleans at today's Gare d'Austerlitz. Since the rail barons of the time were persuaded that direct connection to a competing line would endanger their control over their respective region monopolies, there was no company interstation service of any kind. Freight and passengers traveling between regions of France had no choice but to commute from station to station by road through the congested capital. Topic: A military idea. The idea for Paris Chemin de Verre de Petite Quenture originated with its fortifications. Rail transport was still relatively new when Paris city fortifications were completed in 1845, and France's generals saw the new technology as a means to quickly move troops, machinery, ammunition, and provisions between points along the circular wall. An initial 1842 study resulted in three projects for railways to the inside of the fortifications, another between the forts outside them, and another ring in a still larger diameter outside the city, but by 1845 the government's increasingly urgent priority was joining the nation's railways through a right-bank portion of the inner fortification rails. 
the government of the time was too financially burdened to undertake building and managing a railway on its own, so it depended upon France's major rail companies for financial support and management. The post-1848 revolution government was not in an any better position to negotiate and all the Second Republic government's coercive maneuvering managed to achieve was the rail companies making freight exchange deals and mergers amongst themselves. Topic: One ring, three lines. Topic: I, the syndicated Schumer de Ver de Kentur Rive Droit. Napoleon III's coup d'état on the 2nd of December 1851 meant a new government with more grandiose visions for France's railway future. Reopening the negotiations based on a pre-Second Empire project to connect all of Paris railway stations through an arc of rail between the Rue en Versailles Rive Droit Gare Street Lazare and Orleans Gare d'Austerlitz lines, with the Versailles Rive Gauche lines leading to today's Gare Montparnasse joined to its Versailles Rive Droit counterpart through a junction at Viroflay in the suburbs to the southwest of Paris, the Rue en, Nord, Strasbourg, Orleans then bankrupt, but state-sponsored and Lyon companies signed participation, and the project was transformed into a decree proposition that the Prince President signed into law on 10 December 1851. In this agreement, against a 1 million franc contribution from each company, the government would organize and finance the landscaping, bridges and rails for the line, to be completed no later than two years from the concession signing. Once completed, it would be placed at the disposal of a Compagnie de Chumme de Verre de Quenture de Paris not yet rive droit, a syndicate comprising two members of each company, for a period of 99 years, during which they would provide a service for freight and passengers using rolling stock from each company. The first stretch of Parisian station connecting rail built wasn't part of the Quenture concession at all, but one originating from an earlier inter-company deal which had become a separate concession Session of its own, an arc of rail between the Nord and Strasbourg later, Est lines, open in April 1852, it would be connected to the Kentur upon its completion. The first length of the Kentur railway was completed 12 December 1852 between Rouen's Batignolles freight yards and the Pont du Nord, a point above the Nord Company rails south to the station in Paris. The second Kentur section delivered, between Pont du Nord and Aubervilliers the point where the nord Strasbourg arc connection joined with the Kentur railway, opened to service on 30 September 1853. From then, trains could travel freely between the Batignolles Rouen, Le Chapel nord and La Villette Strasbourg -Est freight yards. The construction of the line between the Pont du Nord and Ivory, the Rive Gauche Orleans Company freight yard, as it undercut the hills of Montmartre and Belleville, was more problematic. Several landslides delayed the work there, but it was delivered in one track from December 1853. Freight service began from the 25th of March and was fully functional after its second rail was delivered in May 1854. Topic 2: The West Company's Paris Orte passenger line. The Pereira-owned West Company requested and obtained the government railway concession that extended the Kentur railway through Batignolles and Orte in 1852. This line was planned as a passenger-only service created mainly for the Parisian bourgeoisie destined for their country homes to the southwest of the city, and had nothing at all to do with the freight-only Kentur line, but the government indicated in the concession agreement that the line was to be an extension of the Chemin de Verre de Kentur. Leaving the Gare Saint-Lazare rails just to the north of the station, the Paris Orte line arced west, passed through the town of Batignolles, then arced south with several stops before its terminus in the town of Orte. In an effort to avoid blocking traffic like the Kentur Rive Droit did, it was built below ground level for most of its 9.5 km length, an endeavor that required the construction of 14 bridges across its entrenched path. 
Besides its Rue saint lazare Embarcadere terminus also serving the West Company's other lines, the line had five stations, Pont Cardinet an SNCF station today, Courcelles today's Pereire, Lavalois RERC station, Newly Port Mayo, Avenue de l'Imperatrice Avenue Foch, Passy Avenue Henry Martin and Orte unused today. The Paris Orte passenger line was inaugurated on the 2nd of May 1854. Topic 3: The West Company's Chemin de Verre de Quenture Rive Gauche. From 1852, the state had continued, non-officially, their own plan study for the left bank arc of rail that would complete their original fortification provision goals, and from 1857, this became an official pre-project that Napoleon III declared of public interest in 1861. As all of the Kenture Syndicate Company lines were already connected between them, they saw no commercial interest in this. The state, intent in their aims, had begun procuring the funds necessary to purchase the lands and lay rail for the line even before Napoleon III's declaration, and had from 1863 begun the landscaping and bridge work needed for a Chemin de Verre de Kenture Rive Gauche, bridges because, unlike the Rive Droit Kenture line, the Rive Gauche wouldn't block traffic, but pass over and under streets over bridges, below underpasses and through tunnels. It is worth mentioning that, during the above, of, Paris had doubled in size. From 1860, Paris annexed all the country communes between its city tax walls and the fortifications, which put the formerly countryside Kenture line within the new city limits. Providing a passenger service for these new arrondissements became yet another state goal, as was the need for railway transport to the upcoming 1867 International Exposition that would bring crowds of visitors to the left bank Champ de Mars. In earlier state rail company negotiations, the state had obtained the possibility of buying the Orte line back from the West Company, and they used this as leverage to get the company to agree to signing a Kenture Rive Gauche concession convention on 31 May 1865. In this agreement, the state would return the Orte line concession to the West Company, would complete the already underway landscaping and bridges needed for the line, as well work an eventual additional concession for a rail connection between their Orte line and the Kenture Rive Droit at Batinols. The state reserved, all the same, an eight-year delay during which it reserved the right to purchase some or all of the concession in case ongoing plans for a metropolitan railway line went through. The West Company, on the side of the agreement, would lay the rail, provide all the buildings, and execute and maintain rail service. For the exposition, the West agreed to lay a temporary antenna from its Grinnell station north to the Champ de Mars, and make the required modifications to their Orte line that would allow it to be used by freight trains. The Kenture Rive Gauche line began service on 25 February 1867, and the temporary Grinnell Champ de Mars portion of track entered service two days later, all in time for the exposition opening. All that remained was the portion of rail connecting the Orte lines to the Kenture Rive Droit under the railway lines from the rebuilt and renamed since 1853 Gar Street Lazare. The underpass construction began in February 1867, and it and its new station, Corcelles Kenture, began service from 25 March 1869. Topic. Kenture service Topic. The early years In November 1856, four S Company locomotives and one in reserve were enough to provide freight service between the city's rail company freight yards, and trains were composed of company-owned freight cars. Most often, freight, traveling the Kenture in the wagons belonging to the company that brought it to the capital, once arriving at the freight yard of the company taking it elsewhere in France, was transferred to that company's wagons, an onerous process. 
The Kenture service was at first reserved for only main station companies, but from 1 September 1855 opened to local merchants receiving goods, and two freight stations, Kenture de Charon and Le Petite Villette, opened in 1855 and 1856, respectively. Service at first was only during daytime hours, but from 1857, after a telegraph service was installed, ran at night as well. From 1861, the North Company took over providing locomotion with seven new 040T numbered 551 to 557 engines that would become the signature Kenture locomotive. The Kenture Rive Droit concession agreement stipulated that the railway should have a passenger service, but the companies were content with their freight only line. After increasingly hostile state pressure, the companies opened five hastily built passenger stations in 1862, Batinol's Clichy, Belleville Villette near the Le Petite Villette freight station, Menelmontant, and Charon in the existing Charon freight yard, and Le Repay Bercy. Two others, La Chapel Saint Denis and Bel Air, opened before two years later. The latter would be the line's first correspondence point from 1863 when the Est owned Paris Vincennes line to its place de la Bastille terminus added a Bel Air Paris station just below the syndicate, Bel Air Kenture station. The Kenture Syndicate owned passenger cars were two level imperilses pulled by 2030 mammoth locomotives, and service was one train in each direction every two hours. Extra trains were added on holidays, and from 1866, to serve local factories, reduced price morning and evening worker trains as well. Meanwhile, the West Company's passenger only Paris Auto line had been running trains every half hour in the mornings, and every 20 minutes in the afternoon, between its Saint Lazare terminus, Batinol's Clichy, Corcelles Lavalois, Newly Port Mayo, Avenue de l'Imperatrice, later Avenue Foch. Passy and Orte terminus stations since its 1854 opening. From 1866, in preparation for its connection to the Kenture Rive Gauche, its keys were lowered, and a new Orte terminal, lateral to the first, took trains from the Saint Lazare station, creating a correspondence with the old platforms that were from then dedicated to Kenture Rive Gauche service. The also west owned Kenture Rive Gauche's stations were, from the Orte terminus, the Point du Jour station at the end of a new bridge viaduct across the River Seine, Grenelle, where passengers Passengers could transfer to a shuttle to the Champ de Mars, West Kenture, a transfer point with the West Lines to the Paris Versailles Rive Gauche station, Montrouge, Gentilly, correspondence with the Paris Sco line to its Denfert Rochereau terminus, Maison Blanche, and Orlans Kenture, correspondence with the Orlans line to today's Gare d'Austerlitz. From its 1866 opening to passenger-only service, the entire line ran alternating Kenture Syndicate and West trains between the Kenture lines then Avenue de Clichy formerly Batinol's Clichy and Orte terminus at a rate of one train an hour in each direction, and at a rate of one every half hour on Sundays and holidays. The entire 33-kilometer trip, with its 21 stops, took, at best, 1h50 then, while planning to replace Paris' several intramuros slaughterhouses with a single complex near La Villette in 1859, Napoleon III demanded that the new slaughterhouse be connected to the Kenture by rail, a plan that became a concession and decree on 19 October 1864. It was a stretch of rail that, after leaving the Kenture to either side of the Belleville Villette station to form a triangle to its east, arced northward to two stations, Paris Bestior in the slaughterhouse marketplace and, further on to the other side of the drawbridged canal, Paris Abattoirs in the slaughterhouse complex itself. The antenna and stations were open to service from 18 October 1867, three days before the inauguration of the slaughterhouses themselves, the completion of the Corcelles underpass and its Corcelles Kenture station for the 1867 Universal Exposition meant that trains could travel in a full circle around Paris, but passengers still had to change trains. Although the Kenture Rive Droit's terminus moved to Corcelles Kenture, passengers still had to change trains over walkways to the Corcelles-Lavalois station. 
Also for the Universal Exposition, the Kenchu arrived droid dotted its line with two new temporary for exposition correspondence stations, Est Kenchu where the Kenchu crossed the lines to the Gare de Lay and Bercy Kenchu over the Gare de Lyon lines that was dismantled after the exposition end stations appeared, and four new permanent stations, Saint Juan, Boulevard Ornano, Pont de Flandre, and Avenue de Vincennes. Replacing the Nord Company engines, the Kenchur Syndicate bought and ran its own 040T locomotives from 1869, which were stored and maintained in new hangars near the Chapel St. Denis freight yards. <laughs> <laughs> Growing pains The Schumer de Verde de Kentur served its military purpose when it was requisitioned by the state for the 1870 Prussian War and Siege of Paris. The Kentur arrived droit was only slightly damaged from Prussian bombardments from the north, but the Orte and Kentur arrived gauche lines were heavily damaged in the 1870–71 Commune Civil War that followed, the newly Port Mayo station was completely destroyed, the Orte terminus mostly destroyed, and the Orte viaduct and Grinnell station were heavily damaged. After the conflict's end, at first only in sections with trains every hour, Kenchur service returned to its half-hour cadence, begun just before the war. From the 16th of July 1871, the Schumer de Verde de Kenchur Rive Gauche was still a passenger-only line, but from 1874, a junction between the West Lines near the Kenchur Vorgirard station allowed freight trains a shortcut from the bifurcation at Viraflay. The West Company had opened a Rouly freight station off of its Paris Vincennes line in 1877, and the Kenchur Rive Gauche Bel Air junction opened to freight service two years later. The Kenchur Rive Gauche's first dedicated freight station, Grenelle Merchandises, also opened in 1879. The Schumer de Verde de Kentcher's passenger traffic was on the rise, and it was expected to be higher for the upcoming 1878 Universal Exposition. The Nord and Paris Lyon Méditerranée lines still had no passenger correspondence points with the Kentur, but this changed with the 1875 opening of the Nord Line Nord station near the Kentur's Le Chapel Saint Denis station, and the Paris Lyon Méditerranée's Bercy Kentur station on their lines near the Kentur Le Repay Bercy station, and Est Kentur reopened from the 15th of May 1878. The Paris Vincennes line added a second arc of rail to the first one at Bel Air that allowed trains to travel to and from Bastille in both directions from 1878, and the West Company rebuilt a new antenna to the Champ de Mars, replacing the one dismantled in 1869, but this time permanently as the head of a still unauthorized Paris Moulineau suburban railway line that was to have its terminus at the Pont de l'Alma. The Paris Orte line also built a new station for the exposition, Avenue du Trocadero. With the temporary addition of the Est Company's Paris Vincennes trains to the Kentur schedule, its train cadence for the duration of the exposition rose to one every 15 minutes, and passengers to the Champ de Mars passed 50,000 per day. The Kentur Syndicate, pleased with its exposition passenger service results, after a period of experimentation after the Est Company withdrew its trains at the exposition's end, decided to make the 15-minute passenger service permanent from 1881, and from the following year, the Paris Orte section topped its service as well. In all, the Kentur had a passenger service frequency of four to eight trains an hour in each direction, but this cadence required a total suppression of freight traffic at certain times at certain points along the Kentur Rive Droit line. The Kentur Rive Gauche's freight service was still insufficient for local commerce, though, and this led to the opening of a new Glacier Gentilly freight yard from 1882. Line congestion was already a problem then, and a plan to build a Schumer de Verde de Grande Kentur extra Muros railway ring had already been underway since 1875. 
the company least concerned with freight matters, the West, had abstained from the agreement, but in 1880 proposed merging the two Kenture syndicates, Petit and Grande, this would allow the companies to transfer their freight traffic to the outer ring and dedicate the inner ring to passenger and Parisian commerce destined freight traffic. In exchange for its participation, the West offered its Kenture Rive Gauche and Corcelles bifurcation concessions, but demanded that its Paris Orte line be exempt from it. This agreement was approved by decree on the 11th of November 1881 and effective from April 1883, although it was isolated in the suburban countryside in the year of its inauguration. The now named Petite Kenture that year was an integral part of the city. Although the Paris Orte and Kenture Rive Droit section plans had accounted for this eventuality, the Kenture Rive Droit had many countryside style road crossings, a hindrance that became more important as Paris population grew. The syndicate shifting its freight transport to the Grande Kenture made remedying this problem possible, and from 1886, with service reduced to one rail in many places, city engineers and Kenture syndicate workers built bridges, dug trenches, re-landscaped, and rebuilt stations, all in time for the 1889 Universal Exposition. The West's Kenture Rive Gauche Northwards antenna would serve the exposition once again, but this time as the head of their Lean des Moulins railway line that, finally built between 1886 and 1889, crossed the Kenture on its way into Paris towards its Champ de Mars terminus. Also for the 1889 exposition, the Kenture eliminated the train change required between Courcelles Kenture and Courcelles Lavalois. From then, Kenture trains could travel a full circle around Paris, and Kenture trains no longer went to the Gare Saint Lazare, serviced through a transfer to or from a Paris Orte train at Courcelles Lavalois. To accommodate this change, the Kenture Syndicate modified their ticketing, signage and color coding to more easily differentiate trains and their destinations. <laughs> La Belle Apic The Petite Kenture had become a popular mode of transport towards the end of the 19th century. The number of Kenture passengers was near 5 million passengers a year in 1880, but rose sharply from then at 13 million in 1883 peaking at between 18 and 19 million for the 1889 Universal Exposition that was accredited with a boost of around 4 million visitors during its May to November eight-month duration. A train every 15 minutes in both directions was the absolute minimum cadence, and, after the exposition's end, the service to the Gare Saint-Lazare was re-established, with two of those trains travelling between Saint-Lazare and Courcelles Kenture, and the other two travelling in a full Courcelles Kenture, Courcelles Kenture circle, a 1h30 trip, backquote. The syndicate Kenture passenger cars then were largely unheated, oil-lit imperial ouverte, bilevel cars with an open top deck cars, but from 1884 they had ordered 16 new imperial ferme covered bilevel cars, gas-lit cars, and heated all wagons from winter of 1891. That year, the Kenture Syndicate Park was 24 single-level first-class cars, 77 second-class cars, one-class mixed car Imperial Ferme, and 51 wagons used for baggage and freight. The open second-level cars had been the cause of a few under-tunnel and bridge deaths and a few suicides over the years, and, under pressure from the state, began to replace them progressively with new single-level cars, profiting also from the occasion to replace West material that they were still using since the Kenture Syndicate merger with cars owned by the syndicate itself. By 1897, there were only a few open top deck cars in circulation. Correspondence with transport to the city centre improved as well, with, from 1893, a twin junction to the Nord lines and additional keys to the Chapel St. Denis station that not only allowed passengers a shorter transfer time, but eased the passing of between main station trains that had to use the off Kenture La Chapel freight yard junction until then. From its completion, the Nord Company, in exchange for giving 40% of profits made to the Kenture Syndicate, added its trains to the Kenture schedule with a new full-circle Nord Station Nord Station service. 
already decreed of public interest since 1889, new Rue station opened by the street of the same name in 1895, lightening the load of the nearby Avenue de Vincennes station. The new station would be used, from 1896, to experiment with raising the platform from its track level to a height that would ease passenger access to the trains, deemed a success, and extended to all Kenture Syndicate stations. It condemned many of the line's older step access cars to disuse. The West Company, in light of the upcoming 1900 Universal Exposition, was granted a concession on 6 July 1896 to extend its Moulineau line from its Champ de Mars terminus to a new station. The West not only extended its line, but lowered its river hugging length into a trench to eliminate its railway crossings at every bridge and added four new, minuscule, Chinese pagoda esque stations, traveling from the Kenture inwards, one past Pont Mirabeau. Late Later, Javel, Pont de Grenelle, de la Bourdonnais and Pont de l'Alma before reaching the Anvalide terminus. Not concerning the Kenture directly, but attached to this extension, was another West project approved on 14 June 1897, the Boulainvilliers line extension that, crossing the river on a viaduct de Passy just below the Pont de l'Alma, would allow Kenture and saint Lazare passengers a much shorter trip between the city centre and the Champ de Mars. It was an extensive project. The Paris Orte ravine between Courcelles Lavalois and Passy was widened into a straight walled trench wide enough to accommodate two additional sets of rails to either side of the existing line. Below the Avenue Henri Martin station, the new lines entered curving tunnels to pass below the Paris Orte lines to emerge at a new entrenched Boulainvilliers station before, after passing through another tunnel, emerging on the river crossing viaduct that curved left to meet the path of the Moulineau line rails towards the Champ de Mars and Anvalide terminus. Several other improvements as the 1900 Universal Exposition approached, a temporary Claude Deccan stop that would become permanent from 1906 to serve exposition installations in the Parc de Vincennes, new Kenture syndicate cars and engines, more Nord built 03 OTS, electric lighting for all 186 cars, and the Champ de Mars station was modified with, in addition to its platform serving for trains continuing to Anvalide, 20 platforms as a terminus for trains from all destinations. The schedule was modified as well to accommodate the many shorter distance Navit trains traveling to and from the exposition. In all, the Champ de Mars station transported 3,979,429 passengers, and the total Kenture passengers for 1900, all companies confounded, was 38,985,079 passengers, its absolute peak. Topic. Decline The Paris Metro had been underway since 1898, the Kenture had created a junction in 1899 with the Est-West Company Ateliers near the Port de Vincennes, and used it to deliver rolling stock to Paris' first metro line, the Port Maillot Port de Vincennes line that was inaugurated on 19 July 1900. The Kenture Syndicate was already preparing to meet future competition through lowering passenger ticket prices and increasing the tempo of their trains during rush hour periods. The West Company, perhaps already seeing the future, withdrew its engines and cars from Kenture circulation after its Boulainvilliers service began from 1901. The Kenture Syndicate replaced these with material of its own and adjusted its train schedules to fill in the slack. 15 new passenger train engines, Nord 230 Terra Seconds, arriving between 1902 and 1903, reduced the time it took for a full circle trip by 10 minutes. Contrary to these measures, the Kenture Syndicate reversed its stance on freight traffic, and returned to its pre-exposition Petite Kenture freight itineraries in 1902. One year later, they compensated the Kenture Rive Gauche's freight insufficiency with the opening of a new freight yard that had been in the works since 1879, Paris Gobelins, in 1903. 
Just to the west of there the same year, the Kentur opened a Paris Brancion livestock station below the still expanding Vorgerard slaughterhouses, and the Charon Merchandises freight station expanded in 1904. The number of passengers had already begun to drop by then, with a 4.55% drop between 1902 and 1903. The Kentur reduced its minimum train cadence from six an hour in each direction to four from 1 April that year, and the North Company stopped its Nord Nord circular service between 1907 and 1908, replacing its access to the Nord main station through a shuttle service between it and Le Chapel St. Denis. The Kentur Syndicate, most likely because of its 1907–1908 loss of 3 million passengers from 28 million, refused to fill the void, and instead reorganized its then Kentur Syndicate only Corsell's Kentur, Corsell's Kentur passenger service to two trains an hour in evenings, three an hour in daytime periods, and six an hour during rush hour periods. Freight, on the other hand, was even increasing. Between 1905 and 1911, it added new Kentur access junctions to its Orbevilliers freight yard, to the Nord Est junction, and to the Kentur line by its Pont de Flandre station, added direct access junctions to the northern and southern junctions of the Belleville Villette freight yard, and expanded its Gobelins freight yard. From 1909, the Kentur had 13 new Nord 3.800 type engines, numbered 81 to 93, and three new 08 OT engines, numbered 14 to 16. The latter would be the last steam engines ever ordered by the Kentur syndicate after a slight increase because of the metro's immobilization because of the 1910 floods. The Kentur passenger traffic continued its decline with 17 million passengers for 1911. The Kentur Syndicate reduced train frequency again that year, with only four trains an hour in each direction at peak hours, and two trains an hour for the rest of the day. The onset of World War I slowed the passenger exodus somewhat, but because of a lack of workers and the price of combustibles then, the Kentur Syndicate stopped its service to the Paris Orte from December 1915. From when the Kentur's terminuses became Orte and Corsell's Kentur, the Orte Line's 1854 station was destroyed during the renovation and enlargement of the Batinols tunnels to the Gar Street. Lazare from 1911, and the temporary station that replaced it took the name, Pont Cardinet from 1919, that same station would become the line's terminus in 1922 when, after a rail traffic interrupting collapse of those same tunnels in 1921, it was moved there when the station's definite construction was complete. From then the only connection to the Gar Street Lazare from the Kentur was through the Boulainvilliers antenna electrified since 1919, but this service, little used by passengers, ended from 1924. The Orte line was joined to the Kentur only through its Orte terminus from then, the two lines would become further distinct when the Orte line, with the Boulainvilliers antenna, was electrified one year later. Meanwhile, the syndicate Petit Kentcher's passenger traffic was losing about 1 million passengers every two years, and had dropped below 8 million by 1926. When the city began demolishing its fortifications from 1919, the Kentcher saw an opportunity to relieve their over encumbered Charon Merchandises freight station by expanding it yet further onto the land freed, but the city refused their request, a setback that may have been behind the syndicate decision to return all its from mainline freight traffic to the Grande Kentur the same year. In another effort to ease its freight traffic overload, the Kentur syndicate purchased its first and only diesel engine in 1932, an 800-horsepower machine numbered D1. It would aid the composition of freight wagons before they were attached to a steam engine for Kentur Transit. The number of passengers on the syndicate Kentur had dropped to 10,247,533 by 1920, and to 9,443,000 thousand five hundred and twenty four by nineteen twenty two. 
In the same period, the Orte line had 9 million passengers in 1920, a drastic drop to 6 million one year later, and by 1930 had only 4,109,000 passengers. From the 4th of May 1931, several letters and meetings about the situation with the Minister of Public Works resulted in a plan end passenger service for the line and to replace it with a PC bus service that would run along the boulevards Marecho between Corcelles Kentur and Orte. In the final agreement signed by the minister, the 28th of February 1934, the Kentur syndicate was authorized to end its passenger service from the 1st of April that year. Topic: <laughs> Local freight dismantlement and abandon. The end of the Petite Kentur's passenger service was also the dissolution of the Grande Kentur Petite Kentur Syndicate, and the concession obligations were divided between the Est, Nord and Etat that had since bought the West Company railway companies in a decree on 23 October 1934. The future of the Paris Orte passenger line, now owned by the ATAT state company, had been a subject of debate since the state as the ATAT company bought the line ten years before, first proposed as an addition to the still growing Metropolitan Underground Railway network. The state also imagined extending its electrified service along the former Kentur Rive Gauche line, but in the end service continued as before, with the only change being, from 1935, a tarification modification to a single class metro type ticket and fee the nord company alone ran the petite kentur rive gauche rive droit corcelles from 1935 which meant the closing of the kentur syndicate owned la chapel saint denis engine hangars Discussions about reopening a Petite Kentur passenger service beginning the same year ended fruitlessly 2 years later with the only change being a corcelles kentur a orte boulogne Renaming, World War II left the Petite Kentur practically unscathed. A 1943 Allied bomb aimed at the Javelin Billancourt factories damaged an arch of the Pointe du Jour bridge, and the 1944 liberation of Paris made the Kentur the scene of many a skirmish. An agreement earlier that year granted the Kentur rail between its Champ de Mars freight yard and the east of its Avenue de Clichy station to the Region West former ATAT company member of the SNCF formed in 1938. This length of rail would later become part of the future RERC through Paris. The Corcelles embranchement, practically unused and reduced to one track since 1934, disappeared underneath a 1950s era building project, and the Corcelles Kentur correspondence was replaced with a metro like tunnel. A later building project swallowed the path of the disaffected rail and destroyed the old Corcelles Kentur station a few years later. Freight traffic had actually accelerated since the Petite Kentur passenger service ended. The Tolbiac freight yard was renovated from 1954, and from 1972, Gobelins Marchandise became an underground station with access ramps for trucks making deliveries to local commerces. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Present state and reuse. The connection between Gare du Nord and Gare de Lay was in use until the 2000s but as of 2011, has seen use fall dramatically. Passenger and freight service from both stations are hauled by engines from the SNCF depots at La Chapel and Panton, seldom exchanging rolling stock. The Grande Kentur is currently used to swap stock and as a diversion line. When plans to reanimate Paris tramway in a ring encircling Paris began from 1995, reusing parts of the Petite Kentur as was under serious consideration, but the planning board opted for a line along the Boulevards des Marechaux, Boulevards of the Marshals, a ring of boulevards, formerly a road to the inside of the city's former fortifications defences were opted for instead. 
The first of these Maresho tram lines, Line 3, was inaugurated on 16 December 2006. Access to the unused rail tracks is partially forbidden, but enthusiasts explore it nonetheless, describing it as a quiet, natural garden space within Paris, until 2007, when an initiative launched several projects to rehabilitate the old Chemin de Verre to transform it into an urban park. Up to today, three sections of the old railway are open to public and there are more to come. One of the legally accessible parts is the Petite Quenture in the 15th arrondissement in the south of Paris. On 23 March 2019 a section in the 20th arrondissement opened to public. Reuse by the RERC The Lean Dorte closed in 1985 to make way for the newly opened Réseau Express Régional C line. The RERC has been extended to Montigny Beach and Argenté after the construction of a new tunnel crossing northwest Paris. The line branches off at Champ de Mars, crossing the Seine. From there the line is underground, the Lean Dorte was covered in 1988, and the line between Henry Martin and Courcelles was reduced from four tracks to two. It exits Paris in a tunnel ending in Clichy. <laughs> <laughs> Reuse 